Please drop it off, pick up the dishes, and that's cool. And then I feel much better about everything that's going on. Okay, okay. So, I just, I, my concern is that we're going to run out of time. We're not going to, we're not going to run out of time. You have tons of time. It's like 9.30 in the morning. We can go there. You have all day till okay. 5.30. So okay, fine. If we can't manage our time, All right, time, so you if you know? got to pee, go now, because okay. we're going to be in this okay. Okay. truck for another okay. hour or so. <laughs> go pee, go now. Go pee now. I'll start at the beginning. Imagination with Tom Wallace is the third iteration of these films. It started in 2011 with J.P. Eau Claire, the segment we did for All I Can. And then in Into the Mind, we brought Tom Wallace in. So that I can go mad big on the jump and get a fatty back from it. And we did a tandem shred with J.P. and Tom. That's sort of when the torch was passed to Tom Wallace. This is uh, an idea JP had to make a video with a little kid daydreaming looking out of a car and it was so awesome to come together with all the guys at Sherpas and come up with an idea for a video that was going to be really, really unique. How do you feel about it, Tom? <laughs> okay, this is going to be terrifying first hit, but it's going to work, I think. Hopefully. Maybe. <clears throat> Possibly. Definitely. We'll send Simon as a guinea pig. Yeah, Simon will handle this. Tom really did a great job of keeping everyone happy and joking. His just general attitude was so positive, and that really shows on screen. You feel the good vibes. One more time. Let's One of the great things about behind the scenes of movies that you never see is just all these rad people. And it's this teamwork, this community that really makes this possible. It was just like really fun. I'm a movie star. I work in the movies. <laughs> For the majority of the shots that were in the imagination piece, we did a poor man's Russian arm, taking Clay's truck and setting up a 25-foot crane in the back of it. Just uh, strapping into the old crane here. Gonna do a little test run. All right, gents. Give us a lowdown here. An integral part of the shoot was a Moby 3 fly system. We, we use it on all aspects of the shots. So um, a lot of the times it gets people skiing with it. You get crawls on the dad cam. Dad cam. We'd have it hanging off the back of the crane on the truck. It'd be inside the vehicle. Just any sort of shots basically involved that cam system. They have the best car I've ever seen. The Jeep Wagoneer. Not the most private of edit suites I've ever worked in in my entire life. We were quite strict with storyboarding this before we went, so we had a good idea of what we wanted to have from each shot, which meant a lot of pressure on Tom to get that shot because it would mean a hole in the edit without it. Filming Imagination was different from every other urban shoot pretty much I've ever been on. There were so many moving pieces. Somebody driving the car, three people in the car filming, telling the actors what to do. You're gonna be like looking up through the middle seat straight out the front window. While I'm trying to ski in the background and time everything perfectly. It was, it's crazy. Ah. Nelson was the only obvious choice to do the whole thing because of our previous experience shooting there. People had seen JP segment and were so excited to hear we were making another one. It was like an urban town experience I've never had. It's a small town community with a big heart and a love for skiing and nothing really cooler than that. Thank you. No problem. The star of the film was the town of Nelson. I really don't think there's another place you could have pulled this off. Nelson. For me, the most ambitious and challenging shot in the film is the one very long continuous shot. We had to get a stunt driver driving full speed around a hairpin turn, keeping up with me, keeping me in focus. 
Oh man, it was insane. It was the longest ski run in an urban environment I've ever done. Tom just completed arguably the, the greatest line of all time in town. Picture's coming back. One of the standout shots that we were doing, we were doing this long rail. It had to be like 50, 60 feet with the coffee guy right at the end of the rail as he comes off. Every time that Tom would get close to getting off the rail, Coffee guy would just spill coffee everywhere because he just be, didn't want to mess up the shot or anything like that, you know? So he was just on full coffee nerves. A lot of coffee went down on the ground on that shot. You totally made that guy spill coffee all over his yeah, face. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. Big burnout, man. The school shoot was an intense day. It was right in the middle of everything and we were all really tired. There's like 75 kids here, all local kids coming to hang out. It was a junk show of people everywhere. It seemed like hundreds of volunteers came out of the woodwork in Nelson and flooded this school area to help us create this dream mega shot. And uh, it was amazing to really behold what can be done when a full community gets on board to make something beautiful together. Part of the point of the movie is to make it seem like it all happened in a few minutes, but the reality is that each shot was a huge task with a lot of digging, a lot of building, a lot of permissions, a lot of people, a lot of work. So this was a massive shoot. It took took us 18 full days of hard work. Are we almost done? Hopefully. Probably gonna shoot more though. Some moments, these shots were like the most exciting shots I've ever gotten in my whole life. And then there were other moments when it's pouring rain, basically falling asleep in the snow. And I'm just like, oh, so exhausted. But like the amount of times we all came together to make something happen. I mean, that video is, is a dream come true for, for me, for a lot of people, and, and hopefully to JP staring down at us from, uh, from above. In the original JP segment, we pulled this bird drawing out of his sketchbook, something that he'd drawn for his wife, Ingrid. We blew it up and painted it to this wall and it was like this street art thing that JP skied by. Uh, this yellow bird has become kind of a symbol of JP uh, in the years since his passing. And we got this amazing local artist named Bryn Stevenson who just hand drew it, but perfect street art replica of this design that JP had shown me. Creating this mural was like a dream come true. It was the best part of the whole project. To help his legacy live on in a way is, is so amazing. And it was the hardest shoot I've ever been a part of, but at the same time, probably the most fun.